Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today we're going to learn how to integrate React Query with Next.js 13. I guess 14, because the conference was yesterday. Here's all the new changes, by the way. Thank God. So we're going to be looking at three different ways that we can use React Query with Next.js. And I'll also give you my favorite one, because the other two kind of suck. And I hate passing props and stuff like that. So let's have a look. You see this nine of diamonds? It's a joke now. Jokes on you. So we just set up a brand new Next project here. And what I'm going to do is open up the terminal and say npm i tenstack query. And I'm also going to install tenstack query dev tools. Let's head over to layout TSX and set up our query client provider. So we need to import query client provider and query client from React Query. However, this will not work. Why? Well, this, this is a server component here. And this will only run client side, so it's not going to work. However, I can still wrap a client component around a React server component. So all the children here are basically the pages, right? So I can still do that. I can have a client component wrap around the children component, and the children component are still going to be server side rendered. So what we can do is just create a providers file in this util folder. That's how I like to make it. And here I'm just importing React Query the dev tools and use state. We're sending the query client to the state here and we're passing that down to the provider so it's saved. And then of course we have React dev tools. And in the middle here, we're just passing now children. So whatever is left there, just render that out. And if we head over here back to our root layout, we can just import our provider and wrap it around our children. Poor children are getting smothered. What about the data though? I have a folder here called server and I'm just running a server action. You can do a fetch if you want, just set up like a basic placeholder uh, API if you want to use it. But yeah, it's fantastic. You get to just make a function. I'm using Grizzle here to query some products from my database and I'm returning the data here. And if there's an error, I'm returning an error. So we know that we could just technically pop in the server action here and just await for it. And we can get the products like that. Like you can create the function up here, that's fine. Or even run it straight here, but server actions work perfectly fine in your RFC components. So this works perfectly fine. So why do we need React Query? Well, imagine we have like a filter component that's a client component. Now, if we want to add interactivity, we need to pass down the products here like that, products, and then we need to do validation for this to make sure that the props that are getting passed down are actually correct. And then in the filter, you could take that products and mess around and filter around with it. But then it becomes a bit complicated. Like how do you handle caching? If the page gets refreshed, are the filter products still gonna stay? You know, and shite like that, that just becomes like, oh, well, how does this work then? So what I like to do is just like prefetch data here on the server and then let all like anything that's interactive, let that be done through React Query. So what we're going to do is I'll show you the three different ways we can do it. So let's look at the first method that we could use. So I just made a products TSX here that's in my components folder. I'm going to import use client at the top because it's going to be a client side component. And then we're going to import use query and also the get products server action. All right, let's save that. And now what we're going to do is export default function products. We're going to create that component. We're going to return a div with this h1 of product like that. Cool. So now here's the cool part. We can just say data error equals use query. And in parentheses here, we can say query key. I can pass down the products. All right, this is the key that we used. And for the query function, it's going to be the same. Get products like that. Hit save. Cool. And now all we need here is to pass down the products as props to the product. Product equals products like that. And that's it. And then here, what you can do now is handle the errors, handle all the fetching super easily. If you want is loading or is fetching is fetched, you can just pop that in here and then you can just say return. If there is an error, return the H2, 
that gives me the error dot message, for example. Cool. And then down here, if we have the data data, then we can just return whatever is down here. Oh, one more thing we need to do is we need to import the products here because we need to send the initial data to the products like that. All right. So this is nice because it does prefetching on the server now. So you're fine. You're covered there. And then it's going to just hydrate it on the client for you. So you're still going to get that server side rendering and then you get to control control your data on the client. So now this is super nice. Now that you're in the dev tools, you can trigger errors, you can remove items, you can see how your data behaves. Not a big fan of this approach because you're passing down props. So now moving this around becomes a bit more difficult. You're also going to need to validate the props here. And like, this is fine for me with Drizzle, but if you have an API that you don't know the types of, you're going to have to keep typing them and that becomes real annoying. And what if I have another client component here, a new client component? If I want to pass the data further down, I'm going to need to get this product and do the same thing and pass it down as initial data and then do the same step again. That just It's just a bit like too much, right? So the second approach I feel like is my favorite and it's much better. Rather than passing down props with initial data, we are just going to create a hydration boundary and hydrate all the client side components for us. So how do we do that? Well, let's track a little bit back. It's not, it's actually quite simple. I don't, I don't know why the docs say that it's, oh, it takes much more time to do, but it really doesn't. What we're going to do is clean up all the props here. We're not going to be passing any more props down. Cool. We still have the server action here, which we're going to keep. And now we're going to import three things from React Query. Dehydrate, hydration boundary, and query client. So we're going to initialize a new query client here. And now we're going to prefetch the query here. We're going to wait. We're going to say products. And we are going to give it the query function. All right. So now rather than passing down props here, what we can do is just create that hydration boundary. So hydration boundary like that and just wrap all the components that need it around it like that. Perfect. And the last thing that needs to have is the state. So we can dehydrate the state and pass in the query client. And that's that. Let's hit save. And now we don't need props anymore. We, you could just get rid of all of that. Uh, you don't need to pass down anything anymore. And here as well, you don't need to pass down initial data. So you can just get rid of that, hit save, and look at that, you also get the TypeScript now. So that's fantastic. So you don't need to type that as well. So I can say data dot data. And I can map over this. I think I just have one now. So I'll just pull out maybe the subtitle like that and hit save. And there we go, 2024 diary. And that's the fantastic thing about this. Now, like I can just simply make a test TSX here, right? I can make any components and I can just pass down that data like so. So this is test here. So I'm using the same query. I can fetch the same data as well. And I can just import it here, import test like that. And I can render this out here like that. And look at that, we have the same thing. Guess what? There's a third fucking way of doing things, of course. Uh, this is a newer method. It's still experimental, so it's not done, but it's exciting. Um, what you can do is just do a query client provider and then wrap all of your props and your children with this new React query streamed hydration. And by doing this, you're not going to need to like pass down any initial data anymore to your component. You're not going to need to do any of this uh, setting up any of this hydration here on the page, this hydration boundary. It's just all of your components. You can just use use query or use suspense query anywhere and it'll work perfectly fine. The problem is, again, it's still experimental and it doesn't prefetch the data for you on the server. So you're not going to get that uh, SSR. So if, if you want SEO, this might not be the way. So that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a sub, drop a like if you like this episode. I can't wait. Uh, I'll give you soon an update about this course. Uh, should be done in like two or three weeks, but we updated so much. Uh, we are using Drizzle now. We got rid of Prisma. We're not using Daisy UI anymore. Um, we switched this with chat CN. There's loads of exciting stuff that I don't want to spoil. So just be tuned. I love y'all and bye.